Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. You are our strength. You are everything to us, man. And this is joy to us to come in your presence. We are so glad, oh God, when they say, Let's go to the house of the Lord. Yeah. For with truth, we're going to meet with you, Father. Amen. We're going to have a deeper communion with you. Amen. For in truth, our, our communion, even our fellowship, is with the Father. Amen. Amen. Father, you are going to teach us how to enter into a deeper relationship with you. Amen. Father, you are going to reveal to us, O oh God, how to enter in, into the realm of impartation. Amen. Father, that, that realm, O oh God, where the Lord Jesus Christ will say with authority that even the Son of Man who is in heaven. Amen. Lord, you teach us, Lord, bring us into the realm of impartation. Amen. That realm that brings down the third heavens and bring it to the earth. Amen. That realm that opens up heaven. Amen. And when heaven is opened up, not just the seven voice that is coming forth. Not just the woman that is coming forth, Amen. but it's a city, Amen. a city that is made of gold. Amen. Bring us into that realm, oh God, that becomes a shelter for the shelterless. Amen. That becomes the abode for those that seek you in truth and in spirit. Amen. That realm of God that becomes healing to the nations. Yes. Oh, Father. We can do nothing now. But we do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Amen. Come and speak to us. Amen. Speak to us, Father. Amen. We don't want to hear the word that I have passed. We don't want to feed on the food that is sour. Amen. Want to eat that hidden man a lot. Oh, Father. Let heaven be open. Amen. And let life smile upon us. Amen. And let our desert condition come alive. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Quickly, let's turn to our Bible, to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 6. From verse 9. Revelation 6. I'm going to do a teaching by the grace of our Father today. I'm going to do a teaching. It's going to be a teaching. I'm not going to preach. Because impartation is the ministration of the Spirit. And when the Spirit ministers, and there is a heart to receive it. Then you have the life, the same life of the spirit. Amen. That is what impartation is all about. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, when Adam was created, the Bible says Adam was formed. Then that man that was formed, there was something. Bible calls it the breath. The breath. The breath 
not from the air, not from the trees, not from the sea, not from any other thing. They breathe from God. God breathed into his noses. And that man became an inbreeding of God. He became a living soul. That was an impartation. Praise be the name of the Lord. That was an impartation. Man. Right from that day, Adam began to live by God's breath. Amen. You know, science believes that man, the air that keeps man alive, is the oxygen that he breathes in and out. That is what they believe. But that oxygen keeps the body of man alive. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. That air, that oxygen you breathe in, that is what keeps the body, the body of that man alive. Then there is a body, a spiritual body of that man. What keeps that body alive is the breath of God. Amen. Glory to God. It is the bread that is coming from God. That is what keeps that man alive. Now when you look at how oxygen works to the body, when you receive that oxygen, that oxygen that is like ordinary air, it is broken down to other things in the body system. It is it, you will find it in the blood. You will find it every other part of the body. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And once there is no oxygen coming into that into that body, every other processes is at stop still. And what happens? The cells, the organs, every other part that depends on that breath, do what dies down. So it is called an impartation realm because there is something that is coming from God. And that thing is causing a work in us. Praise be the name of the Lord. It's, it's causing an effect. It's causing a reaction. And that, that reaction is manifesting the product of God. It's making that air to be manifested. In a bodily form. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about this. I don't want to preach. I'm preaching now. I want to teach. There are things that we have passed across from the beginning of this message. I want to bring one or two things from there and break it down more. So that we can, it can have an impartation to our spirit. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's turn to the book of Revelation chapter 6. You know, many don't understand the importance of coming to the house of God. The house of God is not the four walls. What makes the, that place the house of God is the word that is coming forth. Praise be the name of the Lord. That one makes it the house of God. So we have come to hear, to receive from God. That's why we've come here. And many don't understand the importance of these things. They are satisfied wherever they are. They feel that they are okay the way they are. Forget not that in the dealings of God there are other. Praise be the name of the Lord. There are other. Man. Revelation chapter 6, let's go to verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now the first thing you understand is these souls were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they heard. So it is the word of God and the testimony 
that is slaying whatever that needs to be slain in them. Amen? Amen. So it is the word and the testimony that is slaying all that needs to be slain. Praise be the name of the Lord. It's nothing else. It's the word and the testimony. Now let's go to verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes we are given unto them, unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So I want to teach this. And I want to teach it under this topic. Entering into the realm of impartation. We are still speaking about putting on the rope of righteousness. It is the putting on the rope of righteousness that brings us into another realm. Into the realm of impartation. Into the realm of the ministration of the spirits. Because we are putting on the body of Christ. And this body of Christ is going to help us to understand one. What are we going to understand? Go back to Revelation 6, 9. We are going to understand one. The word of God and the testimony that we must hold on to. Because it is the word of God that you understand that determines the testimony that you have. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, we were called and we had the voice of the Spirit. When we had the voice of his, the Spirit, we believed the word, is that not so? And we had the testimony. The testimony that the Lord has spoken to us. Even how the enemy may want to try our faith with other things try our faith with maybe with the things of this world maybe with the, with the with there are things that we lack of this world the enemy want to use it to try our faith but because we have heard his voice it has given us a testimony but now we are putting on the rope of righteousness that is going to give us even more testimony. We are not just going to hear. We are also going to see. We are also going to perceive. And we are also going to experience. And we are also going to express. And also we are going to also impart it to others. So it's a higher testimony. So it is this higher testimony that is bringing the work of the devil to stop in our life. That is bringing the end of the world in our life. And as the end of the world is coming, the beginning of a new world is being revealed. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, remember I said I'm going to teach these things. So the first thing I want to teach is the seals. Let somebody say amen to that. Amen. Now I want us to turn to the book of Revelation chapter 5. I want to teach this seal so that the seal becomes an impartation to us. Do you love that? Yes, sir. Good. Revelation chapter 5 from verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side. Now, look at this word, sealed. You see that word, sealed? We're going to teach this word. Underline that, that word, sealed with seven seals. Now, if you have a, a Greek Bible, you can look up that word, sealed. It is an English word. But the real Greek word is kataphrasizo. 
Amen? Amen. Don't mind the sound. We are picking out this word so that we can have an impartation of that word. You see, every word used in the Bible in its right sense is an impartation. So, now, when you look up for this word, this Greek word, it is katavrazizo. K-T-A-T-A S-P-H-R-O-A-Z-I-Z-O Katabra Katavrazizo What does that word mean? The English word used for it is sealed. But what is the understanding behind that word? What is the understanding? What is the impartation? What are we going to understand from that word? Now, that kata vrazizo is a combination of two words. And that two word is sealed in English and lay down. Now, if you go back to the book, we are the word foundation is used. You will find that word katabo. Hello. Hi. Foundation katabo. It is there is a laying down. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the word katavrazizo is sealed and laid down. So we are going to search more about it. Because the opening of the seal is a book that has been sealed. But it is laid down. It is brought down. It is sealed and brought down. That is what makes up the two words. Sealed and brought down. I hope I'm not bothering you with the Greek words. It is not my desire to bother you with it. And it's not my desire to sound um, eloquent with it. My desire is for us to have the real meaning of that word. That is my desire. And I want us to understand the real meaning of that word. Because if we don't get the real meaning of that word, we will miss what the seal really is. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, we are talking about a work which the Father himself put his seal on it before he lay it down. Amen. Let somebody say amen to that. Amen. We are talking about Genesis 1-1. Let somebody turn to Genesis 1-1. Genesis 1-1. Genesis 1-1 reads, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This creation of God in the beginning is sealed. He puts his approval on it. You see, when a king gives his order, after giving his order, the order is fine. But what makes it authentic is the king's seal on it. That is what makes it authentic. The seal of the king. That's what makes it authentic. And that document is taken to the one that it is meant for. It is not meant for everybody. If you give it to somebody who does not understand the contents, and the authority and everything that that document has to do with the person is going to use it as a toilet tissue yes, use it to rub you know just use it for anything nonsense because the person does not understand what it means and that is exactly how the bible has become to many because they don't understand the content of this book they don't understand the writings of this book many have come up to say it's friction. Many have come up to say it's written by men. They've come up to say different, different things about it. 
It's because this book is sealed and it is only made for a particular people. And when we are talking about the book that is sealed, we are talking about a people. We are talking about you. You see, the Bible says that it is the good news. It is the declaration of the good news. When the good news is declared, and the people to whom that news is meant for, when they receive it, what do they have they received? They have received the authority. Amen. Not speaking of power now. There's a difference between authority and power. We will get to that also. So, so this sealed book is talking about you. It's talking about you. It's talking about the body of Christ. It's talking about you that is listening to me. He's talking about you that can understand the ways of this testimony. Amen. There's a people that the Father has sealed their life. The Bible calls them the elect. The Bible says every other will be deceived. Except this one, they cannot be deceived. Amen. Why can't they be deceived? There is a mark of ownership in their life. Amen. There's a mark of ownership in their life. And this mark of ownership has been in their life before they were lower down. Do you know what it means to be lower down? It means to come from the height of the gods. The height of the morning stars. The realm of the Elohim company. And brought down to the realm of man. Amen. Before you become man, there is a seal of God inside of you. Amen. The kingdom of God is within you. Amen. There is authority of the Lord, the authority of the Father that is stamped upon your life. Amen. That is why no denomination is enough to deceive you. There is a seal upon your life. Nothing can satisfy you except the one that have sealed you. It takes the same one that have sealed you to open and reveal the contents that is within you. I want you to understand yourself. You did not come to be the day you were born. You have always been before the foundation of the world. Before the world was lower down. Before the catabo. You have always been. Before the lowering down. You have always been. He has chosen you in himself. Before the foundation of the world. He called you my elect. He called you my people. Sealed. Before the lowering down. That is what that word means. Catavrazizo. Yeah. You were born here. Born, it came from your mother womb. You never knew about it. Until one day, someone came to speak to you in that womb. Do you know the womb? The womb is not being born of this world. The womb is the world itself. The first man is the womb. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That first woman is the womb. The womb is not speaking about your mother or your father's womb. It is speaking about the first man. The first woman. That is the womb. You, we are in that womb. Why in the womb? You had the greeting. You had a good tiding that is coming forth from another pregnant mother. From the body of Christ, 
a woman that is pregnant with the body of Christ. You had the greeting that is coming forth from her is a good tidings into you. You receive the Holy Ghost in the womb. Amen. You came to the awareness of who you are while in the womb. Doesn't matter where you are coming from. It doesn't matter your region. It doesn't matter where you are born. There are people that are born of God and you are one of them. If you can hear me, understand me, receive it and believe it, you are one of them. Amen. Sealed before the lowering down. You have the mark of ownership upon your life. Nothing can go wrong. No amount of power can touch you. No demon can touch your life. You're untouchable. You're like Job. Before the devil can touch Job, he needs to take permission. Yes, there is nothing that happens to you that is for nothing. The Father knows about it. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the mark of ownership is upon your life. Amen. The Bible says, John 1, 12, it's as many. It doesn't matter where you belong. It doesn't matter whether you are born of a married mother and a married father. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Listen, I've come to understand one thing. Most of the great men in the Bible, nobody knows about their parents. Nobody knows about them because it's not important. What is important is the life of God that is in you. That is what is important. The dust from where you were formed is not important. What is important is the breath of God that is in you. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether your parents are arm robbers, Gibia, or whatever. It's not important. What is important is can you receive this good tidings? Can you receive it? It's as many that receive it to them that is given the authority. So there is an authority. You are an authority that is working Amen. in two feet. Amen. Let me tell you a little about authority. There's a difference between power. Power is delegated. Authority is the residue. Listen, is the tabernacle of power. Amen. Is the residence of power. Amen. Power is delegated. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'll tell you a little about authority. Because we need to walk under authority. Amen. A man that understands the authority that he has, he will understand the power that he possesses. But a man that does not understand the authority that he has, he will not understand the power that he has. Yes, Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. So as many that have received him, to them that is given, the authority, the Greek word used there for power, listen, the English word used there is power. But the Greek word used there is extosia. Extosia. It is not the same as dynamics. Praise be the name of the Lord. So they, it is a residence of power. You become the house of power. You become the world. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You have the authority. The authority to become sons of God. Amen. We have come to understand that you have the mark of your father. Even that day that you were born. Where everybody is singing and jumping and jumping up. The mark is upon you already. Yeah. You have the mark of approval. You have the mark of ownership. Yeah. It is catastrophasia already marked and lowered down. Yeah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You have that mark already. Praise be the name of the Lord. There is an authority. You must learn to walk in authority. Listen. The man that is occupying 
the seat of the presidency. He's assessing that power in that seat. He understands the authority that he has. So it is the understanding of the authority that determines the amount of power he can exercise. Because the authority lies in the seats. Once the person is no longer the president of America, he lacks that authority. He no longer has it. The power is completely limited. He is known as ex-president. Praise be the name of the Lord. As children of God, as sons of God, you must understand that there is a spirit in you. That spirit is the spirit of your father. Amen. You must understand that you are the offspring of your father. Amen. You must understand that you are spirit, soul, and body. And the spirit that is in you is not coming from that we call oxygen. It has nothing to do with oxygen. The spirit that is in you is the breath of the father. Amen. That's why he's your father. And he has seen the Christ inside of you. There is a kingdom of God that is finished, that is sealed inside of you. When Jesus Christ came, he said the kingdom of God is within you. He said, look not south, look not west, look not the forest or look not left and right. He said the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. How many understand the authority they have? How many understand it? Because when you understand the authority that you have, you will know how to exercise it. When you are exercising that authority, that is what we call power. Yeah. Something is making you to exercise it. And whatever that is making you to exercise it is the word that you have received. Yeah. It's a manifested word. Then when you receive that manifested word, you will have power. Yeah. You will learn how to exercise Size the authority, man, born into this wicked world, sealed already, chosen already, saved already. It is a finished work, sealed up. Praise be the name of the Lord. That is what we call the seal. That is the seal. Christ is sealed in you. And who is Jesus? Jesus is the image of the Father. Yeah. That image is sealed inside of you. The mark of ownership is upon your life. The mark of ownership is upon your life. Listen, anyone that threatens you and gives you two days to live, give them seven days, you will see them fall flat. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see them fall flat. But if you want to have mercy on them, just forgive them. Tell them I forgive you. There is a life that is sealed inside of you. There is an authority that is sealed inside of you. There is a power that is sealed inside of you. It is the gospel that is going to bring forth these things. Make you see them. Make you understand them. And make you exercise it. Yeah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's go back to Revelation 5. I hope your hearts are boiling up. Yes, sir. I hope you are rejoicing. Yes, sir. I hope you are eating this wine, you are drinking this wine. Well, it's a new wine. Yes, sir. How this wine is making you jump up. Yes. Enjoy. Yes. Man, he loved me even before I was born. Yes. He has loved me yes. even before I chose him. Yes, he has sealed me. And he's the one that is seeking me, not even me seeking him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 5. Let's go back to that place. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed. We have known what that book is. Hello. Man, how did you get to the right hand? How did you get to the right hand? Because it's only on the right hand can the seal be opened. 
It's only on the throne will the seal be open. How did you get to the throne? Glory to God. Because we are born into this world. Be mixed up with others. Playing with other children. Misbehaving. Doing anyhow. Not knowing the life that is sealed inside of us. Man. Through the gospel. The Lord begins to call us. You are my body. You are my body. You are the embodiment of my life in you is hidden my power in you is hidden my authority he begins to call you come come out come out of denomination come out of confusion come out of everywhere where the truth is not preached come out you don't belong there you are my body come out we call it the church praise be the name of the Lord and the church is the ecclesia. We know what the word ecclesia means. It is a coming out. It's a called out. And we came out. We came out from the from the religion of our father that are holding us down. We came out from the womb that is holding us down. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know what it does? Man. We continue receiving that voice. Hearkening unto that voice. And he raised us from that church realm, the ecclesia realm, and brought us up to the throne realm. Amen. Why did he bring you up to the throne realm? He's about to reveal you. Amen. You are that book. Christ is about to reveal you. He is about to open your life. Don't mind those people. Oh, they, oh when this man preached, that was when the book was opened. Praise be the name of the Lord. Listen, let me tell you. When that man preached, I was not even born then. Now I have comforts. It is your experience that determines how much you know and how much of Christ that will be manifested through you. Yeah. It is not somebody's experience. Oh, glory to God. We must understand this. Remember, I tell you, I want to teach it. The Lord is bringing us into the realm of impartation. Man. When John just said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard a voice behind me, and what did he do? He bowed down and laid down, bowed down to Christ. And what did Christ do? He laid down, his, he put his hand on his head. How we are the apostles imparting the gifts by laying of hands. How is the laying of hands working today? Listen, the laying of hands, it works in Pentecost. In Tabernacle, there is another laying of hands. In Tabernacle, when the hand is laid upon you, you need to to receive the seven spirits of God. Amen. That is the impartation that is going on. The hand that is being laid upon you is the hand of God, the finger of God, and is casting out every demonic possession that you have entangled yourself with. It's casting out everything that is of the world. It's casting out everything that you have tied yourself with. The same way it casts out seven spirits out of Mary, out of who? Mary Magdalene. The same way the Spirit of the Lord is laid upon you. It is casting out every spirit that has held you bound. It's casting it out. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see the finger of God at work Amen. in your life, bringing you to a new ministry, the ministry of impartation. Oh my. The ministration of the spirits. How many can see the finger of God upon their life? How many can see it? How many can see it? The hand of God upon their life. The Lord took you out of your confusion. Took you out of Babylon. Took you out of denomination. Took you out of your church system. Took you out of your religious and economical and just name it. Different, different bondage. He took you out. 
He raised you up. Raised you up to the throne to reveal you. Because the mark of God is upon you. You must understand that. And let that scripture speak life to you. If you know it's one, one person that understands it, I'm happy. But if more than one, I'm happy. If it's thousands that understand it, I'm even happy. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Understand it. We are getting into the realm of impartation. Many things have changed. Oh my. We are put on the rope. The rope of righteousness. Do you know what righteousness is? Righteousness is to be like God. To see like God. To know like God. Everything of God. When you speak, you speak like God. And your word will not fall to the ground. That is the realm of impartation. You know? Pentecost. They walked in the gift realm. And there are so many things that is going to pass away. There are many, many teachings that is going to pass away. So many of it that is going to pass away. Going to pass away. Because it's the appearing of the Christ that is exposing it. But many don't want to behold it. If you don't learn anything today, learn that you are working, you are a man of authority. You remember, you remember the soldier, the soldier that the Lord asked, I want to come to your house to hear your servant. He said, no, no, I am a man under authority. I know what authority means. Speak the word is enough. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is when the church begin to walk in authority, then the word of Christ will make meaning to the church. Amen. When you don't understand what authority is, how are you going to receive the word of authority? It will, it will, it will be like a word that is falling on top of, on top of stone. So when you understand what authority is, when the, when the Lord speaks, that word of the Lord will not fall upon stone. It's going to bring, bring forth life. It will not be like the word that fall upon a stony ground. You know, how many conditions of ground? Four. But it will be the word that falls upon a fertile ground. Praise be the name of the Lord. Oh, so that's the first thing we must understand today. Now watch. The seal that, that is being opened. Now see. The word seal. The Greek word for it is Phragis. S-P-H-R-U-A-G-I-S. Phragis. That means the sign, the stamp of ownership, of authority. But the other word that is used, now this seal is what is being opened. It is the seal of the Father, the stamp of the Father that you are. That we have come to know. Because now we are in the throne realm. We see the way he sees. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now the opening of this seal. The process of coming to that seal. Is what the opening of the seal is. Oh God. Oh, we can catch it. Now. now there are two words. Two different Greek words use. Two, two different Greek words. And those two words is spragis and spragizo. Now, this spragis is the noun. The spragizo is the vow. So, this one is what the seal is. 
Then the other one is the action word. Now, when you go to the book of Genesis, Genesis 1, 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That creation is sealed. That is the authority. And that creation is Christ himself. That is the authority. That is the stamp of the Father. Now, when you come down to Genesis 1-2, it tells you the condition of the world. It said the world is void. And darkness is everywhere. So, the seal of the Father is hidden. And that is why you cannot see it. It is hidden. It is protected. That is why the carnal eye cannot see it. Because of the condition of the world. And the only way the carnal eyes can see it is when the voice, the spirit, come upon the water. As the spirit of the Lord move upon the water, what happened? There's a voice. And what that voice says? He said, let there be light. Now, let there be light is an action word. It's a verb. Verb is action word. That is where the sealing, the Holy Spirit becomes our seal. So it is the action word that is bringing about the revelation of Christ. Yeah. Oh my. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Who is doing that? Christ himself. Who is the first seal? The Father sealed us. And Christ is revealing the Father. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So when when Paul said the Holy Spirit is our seal. Now, he didn't stop there. He said it is a down payment unto there's a condition of the earth. The condition of the earth is void. Darkness is everywhere. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, that is just the beginning of the work. And that work is not revealing something outside of the Christ that is already sealed inside of you. It is bringing the manifestation of that world. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is bringing it up from glory to glory. When the sun rises, it moves to the next stage. It moves to the next stage. It moves to the next stage until the work is complete. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Until that which is sealed is equal to the end of the work of the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. Oh, I hope we get this. Yeah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is our seal. The Father is our seal. The Holy Spirit is our seal. And when the seal is declared completely open, when Christ is completely raised up in us, praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. What happened? That is the ministry that brings life to the nation. Amen. That is where the mystery of God that was hidden has been fully declared. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. And the Lord has given us a rope of righteousness. He has given us an understanding that we will know him that is true. That we are in him that is true. Even in his son, Jesus Christ. He said, this is the true God and eternal life. Amen. That is that rope of righteousness. Hallelujah. We are putting on Christ. And we are feeding, having access to the hidden man. Having access to the life of the Father. Eating his word. Praise be the name of the Lord. And Jesus Christ is being revealed from glory to glory to glory to glory. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, when I put up that post, I said we are that sealed. Christ is hidden to the world, but is revealed to his people. Those that are seen by the Spirit have the eyes of the Spirit. 
those that have put on the rope of righteousness. It becomes the eyes through which they see all that God has created. Remember Moses. Why the children of Israel were in slavery in Egypt? And Moses was standing with Pharaoh. When Pharaoh looked at the children of Israel, when he looked through the window, he looked at the children of Israel. He was seeing his slave. He would talk to Moses, say, look at my slave. I'm going to increase their slavery so that when they get back home, they won't be able to have anything to do with their children, their wives, so that their generation will die. But when Moses looked out through the same window, you said, these are the people of God. You see, Moses was looking through the eyes of the Spirit. Why Pharaoh was looking through the eyes of the carnal mind? That's why Paul said, he said to be carnally minded is dead. When you came in here, you are looking at yourself as a carnal person. And what fills your heart? Fear. You are carried away by the winds of doctrines. The doctrines of your village people that will tell you how precious your village shrine is become so fearful in your hearts. They will tell you how dangerous your village practice is. If you don't do it, it will kill you. It will become fear in your mind because you are carnally minded. You are minding the world. Listen, there's a Greek word that the Bible uses. There's a Greek word. Let me remember that word. What it means is, you know, what we call the world is not what it is. The things that will pass away are the system of the world. The system. The system, every system that is not what is sealed from the beginning. Every system that is not of Christ is what is going to pass away. Praise be the name of the Lord. It is the system. And we have to come to the end of the system of the world in our life. That is the end of the world. Oh, many will tell you we have come to the end of the world. We have come to the, this is the end of, this is the end time. They don't even know what it means. Have you come to the end of the system of the world? When you have come to the end of the system of the world, then that is the opening and the beginning of the world of Christ. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why the kingdom of God comes not with observation. Because when you follow it with observation, you will miss it. Observation is for carnal minds. It comes not with observation. Oh my. So the kingdom of God is within you. And it is the ministration of the Spirit that is going to reveal it. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. Now we are put on the rope of righteousness. Amen. We are put on Christ. The new man. We are putting off our old ways. Our old belief. Our old faith. The old way that we walk. Because there is something new you that is going to be revealed to you. Amen. There is a ministration that is going to come out to you. It is the ministration of the spirit. It is the voice of the seven thunder. We are going to stop here. And we will continue next time. Let us rise up. We are going to pray. There is a great thing that the Lord is doing. And it takes those that have put on the rope of righteousness to comprehend it. When you can comprehend the work, the manifestation of Christ, then Christ will become a reality in your life. Yeah. Oh my. When the Lord was speaking about the imputed righteousness, he said it's the same righteousness that was imputed to Abraham. And that 
that righteousness is speaking about the same seal that we are talking about. Yes, He's speaking about it. So you came down here having the righteousness of God. Amen. It is an imputed righteousness. Hallelujah. The Lord didn't want you to, didn't wait for you to, to, to know yourself. Didn't wait for you for anything. Praise be the name of the Lord. The righteousness is imputed. It is free. It is given to you free. Glory to God. He said there are many in whom righteousness is going to be imputed. Next week or next time, as the Spirit gives us utterance, we'll deal on that. We are going to pray. Father, help me, Lord. Pass me not, O gentle sea. If you're I am my humble cry, why on others thou art mine? I need Savior, do not pass me. Righteousness, 
The throne realm, the realm of impartation. That realm that will impart life into this body. Oh, fill a couple of Oh, thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Father, we pray, O oh God, let the seal be open and let Jesus Christ be revealed in the life of your children, Father. May they walk in authority. May they walk in power. Oh, Father. We have come into the new realm. The oil and the wine. Oh God. Where the world is open. Oh the time of eating father. With hearts. With sin. is now time to eat. Oh Father. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Because our hearts can comprehend it. Our Father will give it to us. Because we can ask of Him, He will give it to us. Because it's His will, it must be done in our heads. Bless everyone, oh God, this morning. May everyone boil with that new wine. With the new life. Out of their belly, let there be a flow of river of life. Yes. Let that life bring life to every deserted land. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Yes. God bless you all.